It's unrealistic to expect archaeologists to understand every discovery they make. It's also unrealistic to expect scientists to fully understand everything presented to them by archaeologists. The world of the past is a mysterious place, and there are elements of it that we may never be able to explain. This video proves it. Clogs Cave in Victoria, Australia is a limestone cave with significant aboriginal archaeological deposits. Belonging to the Croa Thunku Long clan of the Gunai Colonel Nation, it shows evidence of ancient occupation, with the roof of the rock shelter outside the cave blackened from campfires. Excavations revealed stone tool-making evidence from the Australian small tool tradition dating back a thousand years, while deeper layers suggested occupation around 17,000 years ago. It appears to have been an intermittently used hunting site. Notably, Clogs Cave provides continuous evidence of Aboriginal occupation extending into the post-European settlement period. In 2021, an excavation revealed microscopic remains of a bogong moth on a grinding stone, about 2,000 years old. It marked the first confirmed evidence of insect food remains on a stone artifact worldwide. The discovery was made by Monash University researchers in collaboration with the Gunakurnai Land and Waters Corporation, shedding new light on ancient practices and history. For everything we've learned about Clogs Cave so far, discoveries like the one that happened in 2021 suggest that there's still a lot we don't know about it, and still much to find. The ancient lines that have been carved into the ground of Nazca in Peru might be the most famous in South America. But they're not the only example of the phenomenon. There are also the Sajama lines, which stretch across miles of the desert floor in Bolivia. If you laid these lines end to end, they'd go on for 10,000 miles. Viewed from above, the lines look almost like a network of roads crisscrossing the country's Altiplano Plateau. But there was no such thing as a road when these lines were created. They were slowly and deliberately etched into the desert for unknown reasons around 3,000 years ago. They're close to the Sajama volcano, which might be significant, but why the existence of the volcano would persuade ancient people to carve 10-foot-wide straight lines across the ground for several miles is anybody's guess. They don't appear to start or end anywhere significant, and nor do they form any kind of pattern. There must have been a reason for such intensive labor, but unfortunately, it seems like we'll never find out what it was. In the province of Florida, Department of Santa Cruz, Bolivia, lies the enigmatic archaeological site of Fuerte de Semipara. It comprises two distinct areas, a hill with remarkable carvings believed to be the ceremonial center and a southern area serving as the administrative and residential district. The site has a long history, first occupied around 300 CE by the people of the Mohokoyas culture from the Amazon basin. Later in the 14th century, the Inca made it a provincial capital. The location's strategic significance attracted both the Inca and Spanish with silver mines in the region and a semipata becoming an important staging post on the highway to colonial centers in the high Andes. The ceremonial center boasts an immense monolithic rock of red sandstone measuring 700 feet long and approximately 200 feet wide, adorned with intricate carvings of animals in geometric shapes. Although attributed to the Mohokoyas, some believe the true creators remain unknown. There are other candidates, and it's impossible to rule them out. The site presents a fascinating enigma in Bolivian archaeology with a rich cultural tapestry spanning different periods and influences. Tristan Clavenga made a fascinating discovery while strolling along a creek in Birmingham, Alabama, USA in July 2023. He spotted a rock covered in what appeared to be scales. Initially thinking it might be a relic from a prehistoric palm or tree, Upon closer inspection and with the input of a friend, he considered the possibility of it being a fossilized imprint of fish scales due to its scaly appearance. Clavenga shared photos of the rock on Reddit's r slash fossilid, where several users identified it as Lepidodendron, an extinct type of tree-like plant that thrived around 300 million years ago, 
when the continents of the Americas, Africa, and Europe were part of the supercontinent Pangaea. Lepidodendron, also known as scale trees, grew up to 100 feet tall with unbranched trunks and needle-like leaves at the tip. The leaves would shed as the plant grew, leaving distinctive scale-like scars. The well-preserved fossil astonished Clavenga and fellow Reddit users, highlighting the wonders of nature and the mystery still waiting to be uncovered from the Earth's past. We're fortunate that Tristan is so observant. Plenty of people would simply have walked straight past this precious piece of ancient history. In the picturesque countryside of Whipsnade, England, an extraordinary geoglyph stands out from the landscape. Unlike the usual horse figures seen in England's giant hill figures, this unique geoglyph depicts the majestic king of the jungle in all its feline glory, the White Lion. This colossal creation, stretching an impressive 483 feet in length, was carved into Chalk Hill within the Dunstable Downs near the renowned Whipsnade Zoo, the UK's largest zoo. The Zoological Society of London had a cunning reason behind this magnificent lion's construction. It was built to serve as a warning to low-flying aircraft not to disturb the zoo's animals with their close proximity. Additionally, it acted as a clever advertising tool for the zoo, showcasing its grandeur from the skies. The lion's outline was only partially visible when it was first carved in 1933, but later it was completed to become the largest geoglyph in the country. Throughout the years, the lion endured some wear and tear, becoming overgrown and losing its former allure. However, in 2018, a generous neighbor donated 50 truckloads of chalk allowing the zoo to restore the lion to its former splendor. Now this magnificent creation stands proudly on the hill, occasionally attracting a colony of wallabies and giant South American rodents called cavies, adding an extra touch of wonder to this already magical site. Archaeologists have made fascinating discoveries in Iran's burnt city, an abandoned site dating back to 2350 BCE. Recently, a team of Iranian, Serbian, and Italian archaeologists unearthed rare figurines depicting animals and people. Among the figurines were designs of cows, sitting women, and standing men, but their exact significance remains a mystery. Even after extensive research, only 4% of the burnt city has been excavated, leaving much yet to be explored. The site, one of the world's largest early cities and a UNESCO World Heritage Site, was a hub of trade with Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley. This interconnected city has yielded intriguing finds, including what some consider the world's first ever animation on a pot depicting images of an ibex. Additionally, archaeologists discovered the oldest known backgammon set and dice. In addition, the burnt city has also given up evidence of the first artificial eye on the body of an unusually tall woman, crafted with bitumen and adorned with gold paint and a sunburst pattern in black. We'll never know what the people who made the recently discovered figurines meant by their creation, but it's entirely possible that they were meant as a form of expressive art. Archaeologists from the University of Cadiz have made exciting discoveries in the La Lentejuela Tiba necropolis near Malaga, Spain. This concentration of burial structures has been studied since 2005, revealing 13 structures in previous excavations. Recently, the team uncovered two new megalithic dolmens during this season's excavation with a particular focus on Funeral Structure 1. The dolmen features a bent corridor leading to an antechamber distinguished by two vertical orthostats. Preliminary dating suggests that the structure was built at the end of the 4th millennium BCE. Interestingly, the dolmen was later reused during the Bronze Age around the 3rd millennium BCE. The Bronze Age people in the vicinity used the dolmen to bury their dead, creating small spaces within the structure to lay the deceased individually or in pairs. To document the necropolis comprehensively, the researchers employed cutting-edge technologies such as aerial photography with a drone, 3D digital scanning, photogrammetry, and precise topography using total stations and differential GNSS. Archaeological samples were also taken to further date the site and establish a chronological framework, shedding light on the funerary practices of the prehistoric inhabitants of the region. 
Serbian coal miners made an astonishing discovery as they dug through the mud of an ancient riverbed near Vermanicium, Serbia. Three probable Roman-era ships hidden for over 1,300 years. The largest vessel, a 49-foot-long flat-bottomed riverboat, showcases Roman construction techniques. Alongside it, two smaller dugout boats crafted from single tree trunks matching ancient descriptions of Slavic boats used to attack the Roman frontier across the Danube River. The Castalic surface mine situated near the ancient Roman city of Viminicium was once home to a squadron of Roman warships on the Danube River. Tragically, the mining equipment severely damaged the largest ship, but the archaeologists aimed to reconstruct it. The ship's position atop a 49-foot deep layer of gravel buried under 23 feet of silt and clay preserved them in remarkably good condition until the recent excavation. The large ship with a single deck and iron fittings suggests a crew of 30 to 35 sailors. The dugout longboats were simpler craft with one displaying carved decorations, while the events of 2020 stalled further investigation at the time of the discovery, the ship's Roman origins were considered probable due to the historical records. Their discovery fuels intrigue about potential commerce or conflict along the Roman frontier. Nestled on a small mountain in the Malpaso Valley of central Zacatecas, Mexico, lies La Camiara, a fascinating Mesoamerican complex shrouded in enigma. Its location on the northern periphery of Mesoamerica has sparked various theories from a Toltec outpost to a Teohucan fortress. Some even linked it to the mythical Chico Mostoc the supposed ancestral home of the Aztec Mexicas and other nahadi speaking groups. The main occupation of La Quemada dates back to the epiclassic period of the 7th to 10th centuries, but the site's foundation and extent of occupation remain uncertain due to conflicting dates. The complex is divided into three sections and features masonry platforms as foundations for upper structures. Its ceremonial significance is evident through numerous ceremonial buildings, including pyramids and patio platforms. The architectural elements were crafted using locally sourced rhyolite and granite slabs. Excavations have revealed human skeletal deposits, suggesting reverence to ancestors and a social order intertwined with violence. The site's decline coincides with the Toltec's rise, marked by two phases of destruction by fire, between 854 to 968 and 1018 to 1163. At first glance, the King Goody Hammer, also known as the King Goody Artifact, appears to be nothing more interesting than a piece of steel embedded into a rock. The tale takes a twist, though, when you find out that the metal is actually a thick iron nail of a kind that can only have been designed by human hands and that the rock it's embedded in comes from the Cretaceous era. That gives both the rock and the nail an age of roughly 360 million years. Named after the Scottish quarry it was discovered in back in 1844, the artifact was presented to the British Association for the Advancement of Science by the scientist Sir David Brewster. He'd already examined it personally and could find no explanation for it nor any evidence of forgery. What the British Association for the Advancement of Science made of it is unknown. There's no further record of it after Sir David handed it over to them for their appraisal. Did they think so little of it that they threw it away? Or is it being held somewhere under lock and key because scientists are still trying to work out how it could possibly exist? We won't hold it against you if you've never heard of Pasha Gardens in Thessaloniki, Greece. Even most of the local residents don't know it's there. If they did, they might come and take care of it a little better than it's been over the years. These days, it's half ruined, but visitors to the park still report feeling a strange energy the moment they walk into it. Pasha Gardens belongs to the older part of the town, where many Ottoman-era buildings still stand. And it's mostly hidden from view by a hospital. Whoever built the park was either a surrealist or had a strange sense of humor. The tunnel surrounding the fountain leads nowhere, and there's a definite Gaudi influence on the style of the sculptures. Inscriptions on some of the statues indicate a creation date of 1904, 
but the park itself may go back much further than that. Everyone from Sephardic Jews to Muslim mystics has been credited with its creation, but the real story of its rise and partial fall is a secret lost to time. Local legends say that Pasha Gardens is cursed, but we're sure that's just superstition. Or is it? Some archaeological discoveries hide in plain sight. There's been a huge stone wall running 71 miles in the west of Iran for nearly 1,600 years, but nobody's ever bothered to pay it any attention before. In terms of length and size, it's comparable to the famous Hadrian's Wall built in Great Britain by the ancient Romans, but doesn't enjoy any of that wall's profile or recognition. Experts say that more than 35 million square feet of stone would have been used to build the wall, which would have required a huge workforce here and now, let alone back then. At various points along the wall, traces of pottery have been found, as well as remnants of old structures and buildings, which have almost totally crumbled away. Interestingly, although the existence of the wall has never been recorded in any official document, people who live close to it have been aware of it for generations and call it the Gari Wall, although the origin of the name is unknown. We have no idea who built it or why it was built, but from what little remains, we can say that it was likely 10 feet high and 13 feet thick, so it may have had defensive properties. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.